Cardinal, Catholic Church. A cardinal, literally cardinal of the Holy Roman Church, is a senior ecclesiastical leader, considered a prince of the church, and usually an ordained bishop of the Catholic Church. The cardinals of the church are collectively known as the College of Cardinals. The duties of the cardinals include attending the meetings of the college and making themselves available individually or in groups to the pope as requested. Most have additional duties, such as leading a diocese or archdiocese or managing a department of the Roman Curia. A cardinal's primary duty is electing the pope when the see becomes vacant up during the set of vacant, the period between a pope's death or a resignation and the election of his successor, the day-to-day -day governance of the Holy See is in the hands of the College of Cardinals. The right to enter the conclave of cardinals where the pope is elected is limited to those who have not reached the age of 80 years by the day the vacancy occurs. In 1059, the right of electing the pope was reserved to the principal clergy of Rome and the bishops of the seven suburbicarian sees. In the 12th century, the practice of appointing ecclesiastics from outside Rome as cardinals began, with each of them assigned a church in Rome as his titular church or linked with one of the suburbicarian dioceses, while still being incarnated in a diocese other than that of Rome. The term cardinal at one time applied to any priest permanently assigned or incarnated to a church or specifically to the senior priest of an important church, based on the Latin cardo, hinge, meaning principal or chief. The term was applied in this sense as early as the 9th century to the priests of Dicholi, parishes, of the Diocese of Rome. There is disagreement about the origin of the term, but the consensus that cardinalis from the word cardo, meaning pivot or hinge, was first used in late antiquity to designate a bishop or priest who was incorporated into a church for which he had not originally been ordained out in Rome. The first persons to be called cardinals were the deacons of the seven regions of the city at the beginning of the 6th century, when the word began to mean principal, eminent, or superior. The name was also given to the senior priest in each of the titled churches, the parish churches, of Romanto the bishops of the seven sees surrounding the city. By the 8th century the Roman cardinals constituted a privileged class among the Roman clergy. They took part in the administration of the Church of Rome and in the papal liturgy. By decree of a synod of 769, only a cardinal was eligible to become bishop of Rome. Cardinals were granted the privilege of wearing the red hat by Pope Innocent IV in 1244. In cities other than Rome, the name cardinal began to be applied to certain churchmen as a mark of honor. The earliest example of this occurs in a letter sent by Pope Zacharias in 747 to Pippin III, the short, ruler of the Franks, in which Zacharias applied the title to the priests of Paris to distinguish them from country clergy. This meaning of the word spread rapidly, and from the 9th century various episcopal cities had a special class among the clergy known as cardinals. The use of the title was reserved for the cardinals of Rome in 1567 by Pius V. In the year 1563 the influential Ecumenical Council of Trent, headed by Pope Pius IV, wrote about the importance of selecting good cardinals. According to this historic council nothing is more necessary to the Church of God than that the Holy Roman Pontiff applied that solicitude which by the duty of his office he owes the universal Church in a very special way by associating with himself as cardinals the most select persons only, and appoint to each Church most eminently upright and competent shepherds, and this the more so because our Lord Jesus Christ will require at his hands the blood of the sheep of Christ that perish through the evil government of shepherds who are negligent and forgetful of their office. The earlier influence of temporal rulers, notably the French kings, reasserted itself through the influence of cardinals of certain nationalities or politically significant movements. Traditions even developed entitling certain monarchs, including those of Austria, Spain, and France, to nominate one of their trusted clerical subjects to be created cardinal, a so-called crown cardinal. In early modern times, cardinals often had important roles in secular affairs. In some cases, they took on powerful positions in government. In Henry VIII's England, his chief minister was Cardinal Woolsey. Cardinal Richelieu's power was so great that he was for many years effectively the ruler of France. Richelieu's successor was also a cardinal, Jules Mazarin. Guillaume Dubois and André Hercule de Flory complete the list of the four great cardinals to have ruled France. In Portugal, due to a succession crisis, one cardinal, Henry, king of Portugal, was crowned king, the only example of a cardinal king. While the incumbents of some sees are regularly made cardinals, and some countries are entitled to at least one cardinal by concordat, usually earning either its primate or the metropolitan of the capital city the cardinal's hat. No see carries an actual right to the cardinalate, 
not even if its bishop is a patriarch. In 1059, Pope Nicholas II gave cardinals the right to elect the Bishop of Rome in the papal bull in nomine domini. For a time this power was assigned exclusive light to the cardinal bishops, but in 1179 the Third Lateran Council restored the right to the whole body of cardinals. In 1586 Pope Sixtus V limited the number of cardinals to 70, 6 cardinal bishops, 50 cardinal priests, and 14 cardinal deacons. Pope John XXIII exceeded that limit citing the need to staff church offices. In November 1970 in Ingra Vesentum Etatum, Pope Paul VI established that electors would be under the age of 80 years. When it took effect on January 1, 1971, it deprived 25 cardinals of the right to participate in a conclave. In October 1975 in Romano Pontifici Elegendo, he set the maximum number of electors at 120, while establishing no limit on the overall size of the college. Popes can set aside church laws and they have sometimes brought the number of cardinals under the age of 80 to more than 120, reaching as high as 135 with Pope John Paul II's consistory of February 21, 2001. No more than 120 electors have ever participated in a conclave, but most canon lawyers believe that if their number exceeded 120 they would all participate. Pope Paul VI also increased the number of cardinal bishops by assigning that rank. In 1965, to patriarchs of the Eastern Catholic Churches when named cardinals, each cardinal takes on a titular church, either a church in the city of Rome or one of the suburbicarian sees. The only exception is for patriarchs of Eastern Catholic Churches. Nevertheless, cardinals possess no power of governance nor are they to intervene in any way in matters which pertain to the administration of goods, discipline, or the service of their titular churches. They are allowed to celebrate Mass and hear confessions and lead visits and pilgrimages to their titular churches, in coordination with the staff of the church. They often support their churches monetarily, and many cardinals do keep in contact with the pastoral staffs of their titular churches. The Dean of the College of Cardinals in addition to such a titular church also receives the titular bishopric of Ostia, the primary suburbicarian seed. Cardinals governing a particular church retain that church. In 1630, Pope Urban VIII decreed their title to be eminence, previously, it had been illustrissimo and reverendissimo, and decreed that their secular rank would equate to prince, making them secondary only to the Pope and crown monarchs. In accordance with tradition, they signed by placing the title cardinal, abbreviated card, after their personal name and before their surname as, for instance, John Cardinal Doer, in Latin, Ioannis Cardinalis Cognomen. Some writers, such as James Charles Noonan, Hold that, in the case of cardinals, the form used for signatures should be used also when referring to them in English. Official sources such as the Catholic News Service say that the correct form for referring to a cardinal in English is normally as cardinal, first name, surname. This is the rule given also in style books not associated with the Catholic Church. This style is also generally followed on the websites of the Holy See and Episcopal Conferences. Oriental patriarchs who are created cardinals customarily use Sancti Ecclesia Cardinalis as their full title, probably because they do not belong to the Roman clergy. In Latin, the first name, cardinal, surname, order is used in the proclamation of the election of a new pope by the cardinal protodeacon, if the new pope is a cardinal, as he has been since 1378. Cardinal bishops, Cardinals of the Episcopal Order, are among the most senior prelates of the Catholic Church. Though in modern times most cardinals are also bishops, the term cardinal bishop only refers to the cardinals who are titular bishops of one of the seven suburbicarian sees. In early times, the privilege of papal election was not reserved to the cardinals, and for centuries the person elected was customarily a Roman priest and Navira bishop from elsewhere. To preserve apostolic succession the right of consecrating him a bishop had to be performed by someone who was already a bishop. The rule remains that, if the person elected pope is not yet a bishop, he is consecrated by the dean of the College of Cardinals, the Cardinal Bishop of Ostia. There are seven suburbicarian sees, Ostia, Albano, Porto, and Santa Rufina, Palestrina, Sabina, and Mintana, Frascati and Valetri. Valetri was united with Ostia from 1150 until 1914, when Pope Pius X separated them again, but decreed that whichever cardinal bishop became dean of the College of Cardinals would keep the suburbicarian see he already held, adding to it that of Ostia, with the result that there continued to be only six cardinal bishops. Since 1962, 
the cardinal bishops have only a titular relationship with the suburbicarian sees, with no powers of governance over them. Each see has its own bishop, with the exception of Ostia, of which the cardinal vicar of the See of Rome serves as apostolic administrator. The current cardinal bishops of the suburbicarian dioceses are given in the table below, along with those cardinals whose titular churches were co-opted to a suburbicarian rank in June 2018. Those over 80 years of age are ineligible to participate in a papal conclave. For a period ending in the mid-20th century, long-serving cardinal priests were entitled to fill vacancies that arose among the cardinal bishops, just as cardinal deacons of 10 years standing are still entitled to become cardinal priests. Since then, cardinals have been advanced to cardinal bishop exclusively by papal appointment. Those appointed to be cardinal bishops are usually already cardinals, but their seniority within the order of cardinal bishops is determined by the date of their elevation to the order of cardinal bishop, rather than by the date they originally became cardinals of a lesser order. On June 26, 2018, it was announced that, corresponding to the expansion in cardinal priests and cardinal deacons in recent decades, there would be an expansion in cardinal bishops, of Roman titles. Four cardinals, effective June 28 were elevated to this rank by having their titular churches co-opted to suburbicarian rank. At the time of the announcement, all six cardinal bishops of suburbicarian see titles, as well as two of the three cardinal patriarchs, were non-electors because of having reached age 80. The Dean of the College of Cardinals, or Cardinal Dean, is the primus inter pairs of the College of Cardinals, elected by the Latin Church cardinal bishops from among their own number, an election, however, that must be approved by the Pope. The position of dean formerly belonged by right to the longest serving off the cardinal bishops. The vice dean is similarly elected by the Latin Church cardinal bishops from among their own number with the Pope's approval and also formerly belonged by right to the second longest serving of the cardinal bishops. In 1965, Pope Paul VI decreed in his motu proprio ant purporatorum patrum collegium that patriarchs of the Eastern Catholic Churches who were named cardinals, i.e., patriarch cardinals, would also be cardinal bishops, ranking after the six cardinal bishops of the suburbicarian sees. Unlike all other cardinals, these patriarch cardinals do not receive any title associated with the Diocese of Rome. Unlike the other cardinal bishops, they do not participate in electing the dean nor can they be chosen dean. There are currently four Eastern patriarchs who are cardinal bishops. If Latin Church prelate who carries the title patriarch, such as that of Venice or Lisbon, becomes a cardinal, he ranks as a cardinal priest, not automatically as a cardinal bishop, unless specifically appointed as one. Cardinal priests are the most numerous of the three orders of cardinals in the Catholic Church, ranking above the cardinal deacons and below the cardinal bishops. Those who are named cardinal priests today are generally bishops of important dioceses throughout the world, though some hold curial positions. In modern times, the name cardinal priest is interpreted as meaning a cardinal who is of the order of priests. Originally, However, this referred to certain key priests of important churches of the Diocese of Rome, who were recognized as the cardinal priests, the important priests chosen by the Pope to advise him in his duties as Bishop of Rome, the Latin cardo means hinge. Certain clerics in many dioceses at the time, not just that of Rome, were said to be the key personnel, the term gradually became exclusive to Rome to indicate those entrusted with electing the Bishop of Rome. The Pope. While the cardinalate has long been expanded beyond the Roman pastoral clergy in Roman Curia, every cardinal priest has a titular church in Rome, though they may be bishops or archbishops elsewhere, just as cardinal bishops are given one of the suburbicarian dioceses around Rome. Pope Paul VI abolished all administrative rights cardinals had with regard to their titular churches, though the cardinal's name and coat of arms are still posted in the church, and they are expected to celebrate Mass and preach there if convenient when they are in Rome. While the number of cardinals was small from the times of the Roman Empire to the Renaissance, and frequently smaller than the number of recognized churches entitled to a cardinal priest, in the 16th century the college expanded markedly. In 1587, Pope Sixtus V sought to arrest this growth by fixing the maximum size of the college at 70, including 50 cardinal priests, about twice the historical number. This limit was respected until 1958, and the list of titular churches modified only on rare occasions, generally when a building fell into disrepair. When Pope John XXIII abolished the limit, he began to add new churches to the list, which Popes Paul VI and John Paul II continued to do. Today there are close to 150 titular churches, out of over 300 churches in Rome. 
Mm. The cardinal who is the longest serving member of the order of cardinal priests is titled Cardinal Protopriest. He had certain ceremonial duties in the conclave that have effectively ceased because he would generally have already reached age 80, at which cardinals are barred from the conclave. The current cardinal protopriest is Michael Mishai Kitbunchu of Thailand. The cardinal deacons are the lowest ranking cardinals. Cardinals elevated to the diaconal order are either officials of the Roman Curia or priests elevated after their 80th birthday. Bishops with diocesan responsibilities, however, are created cardinal priests. Cardinal deacons derive originally from the seven deacons in the papal household and the seven deacons who supervised the church's works in the districts of Rome during the early Middle Ages, when church administration was effectively the government of Rome and provided all social services. Cardinal deacons are given title to one of these deaconries. Cardinals elevated to the diaconal order are mainly officials of the Roman Curia holding various posts in the church administration. Their number and influence has varied through the years. While historically predominantly Italian the group has become much more internationally diverse in later years. While in 1939 about half were Italian by 1994 the number was reduced to one-third. Their influence in the election of the Pope has been considered important, they are better informed and connected than the dislocated cardinals but their level of unity has been varied. Under the 1587 decree of Pope Sixtus V, which fixed the maximum size of the College of Cardinals, there were 14 cardinal deacons. Later, the number increased. As late as 1939, almost half of the cardinals were members of the Curia. Pius XII reduced this percentage to 24%. John XXIII brought it back up to 37%, but Paul VI brought it down to 27%, where John Paul II maintained this ratio. As of 2005, there were over 50 churches recognized as cardinalatial deaconries though there were only 30 cardinals of the order of deacons. Cardinal deacons have long enjoyed the right to opt for the order of cardinal priests, optazione, after they have been cardinal deacons for 10 years. They may on such elevation take a vacant title, a church allotted to a cardinal priest is the church in Rome with which he is associated, or their diaconal church may be temporarily elevated to a cardinal priest's title for that occasion. When elevated to cardinal priests, they take their precedence according to the day they were first made cardinal deacons, thus ranking above cardinal priests who were elevated to the college after them, regardless of order. When not celebrating Mass but still serving a liturgical function, such as the semiannual urbi et orbi papal blessing, some papal Masses and some events at ecumenical councils, cardinal deacons can be recognized by the dalmatics they would don with a simple white mitre, so-called mitra simplex. The cardinal protodeacon is the senior cardinal deacon in order of appointment to the College of Cardinals. If he is a cardinal elector and participates in a conclave, he announces a new pope's election and name from the central balcony of St. Peter's Basilica in Vatican City. The protodeacon also bestows the pallium one new pope and crowns him with the papal tiara, though coronations have been discontinued since Pope John Paul I opted for a simpler papal inauguration ceremony in 1978. The current cardinal protodeacon is Renato Raffaele Martino. No wiki less than slash no wiki ceased to be protodeacon upon being raised to the order of cardinal priest Br was protodeacon at time of death. The cardinal Camerlengo of the Holy Roman Church, assisted by the vice Camerlengo and the other prelates of the office known as the Apostolic Camera, has functions that in essence are limited to a period of set of of the papacy. He is to collate information about the financial situation of all administrations dependent on the Holy See and present the results to the College of Cardinals, as they gather for the papal conclave. Until 1917, it was possible for someone who was not a priest, but only in minor orders, to become a cardinal, see lay cardinals, below, but they were enrolled only in the order of cardinal deacons. For example, in the 16th century, Reginald Pohl was a cardinal for 18 years before he was ordained a priest. In 1917 it was established that all cardinals, even cardinal deacons, had to be priests, and, in 1962, Pope John XXIII set the norm that all cardinals were ordained as bishops, even if they are only priests at the time of appointment. As a consequence of these two changes, Canon 351 of the 1983 Code of Canon Law requires that a cardinal be at least in the order of priesthood at his appointment, and that those who are not already bishops must receive episcopal consecration. Several cardinals aged over 80 or close to it when appointed have obtained dispensation from the rule of having to be a bishop. These were all appointed cardinal deacons, but Roberto Tucci and Albert Van Hoey lived long enough to exercise the right of option and be promoted to their rank of cardinal priests.
vest. A cardinal who is not a bishop is still entitled to wear and use the episcopal vestments and other pontificalia, episcopal regalia, mitre, crozier, zucchetto, pectoral cross and ring. Even if not a bishop, any cardinal has both actual and honorary precedence over non-cardinal patriarchs, as well as the archbishops and bishops who are not cardinals, but he cannot perform the functions reserved solely to bishops, such as ordination. The prominent priests who since 1962 were not ordained bishops on their elevation to the cardinalate were over the age of 80 or near to it, and so no cardinal who is not a bishop has participated in recent papal conclaves. At various times, there have been cardinals who had only received first tonsure and minor orders but not yet been ordained as deacons or priests. Though clerics, they were inaccurately called lay cardinals. Teodolfo Mertel was among the last of the lay cardinals. When he died in 1899, he was the last surviving cardinal who was not at least ordained a priest. With the revision of the Code of Canon Law promulgated in 1917 by Pope Benedict XV, only those who are already priests or bishops may be appointed cardinals. Since the time of Pope John XXIII a priest who is appointed a cardinal must be consecrated a bishop, unless he obtains a dispensation. In addition to the named cardinals, the Pope may name secret cardinals or cardinals in pector, Latin for in the breast. During the Western Schism, many cardinals were created by the contending popes. Beginning with the reign of Pope Martin V, cardinals were created without publishing their names until later, a practice termed creci et reservati in pector. A cardinal named in pector is known only to the Pope. In the modern era, popes have named cardinals in pector to protect them or their congregations from political reprisals. If conditions change, the Pope makes the appointment public. The cardinal in question then ranks in precedence with those made cardinals at the time of his in pector appointment. If a Pope dies before revealing the identity of an in pector cardinal, the person's status as cardinal expires. The last Pope known to have named a cardinal in pector is Pope John Paul II who named four, including one whose identity was never revealed. When in choir dress, a Latin church cardinal wears scarlet garments, the blood-like red symbolizes a cardinal's willingness to die for his faith. Excluding the rochet, which is always white, the scarlet garments include the cassock, mozzetta, and beretta, over the usual scarlet zucchetto. The beretta of a cardinal is distinctive not merely for its scarlet color but also for the fact that it does not have a pompon or tassel on the top as do the berettas off other prelates. Until the 1460s, it was customary for cardinals to wear a violet or blue cape unless granted the privilege of wearing red when acting on papal business. His normal wear cassock is black but has scarlet piping and a scarlet fascia, sash. Occasionally, a cardinal wears a scarlet variola which is a cape worn over the shoulders, tied at the neck and about by narrow strips of cloth in the front, without any trim or piping on it. It is because of the scarlet color of cardinals vesture that the bird of the same name has become known as such. Eastern Catholic cardinals continue to wear the normal dress appropriate to their liturgical tradition, though some may line their cassocks with scarlet and wear scarlet fascias, or in some cases, wear Eastern-style cassocks entirely of scarlet. In previous times, at the consistory at which the Pope named a new cardinal, he would bestow upon him a distinctive wide-brimmed hat called a galero. This custom was discontinued in 1969 and the investiture now takes place with a scarlet beretta. In ecclesiastical heraldry, however, the scarlet galero is still displayed on the cardinal's coat of arms. Cardinals have the right to display the galero in their cathedral, and when a cardinal died, it would be suspended from the ceiling above his tomb. Some cardinals will still have a galero made, even though it is not officially part of their apparel. To symbolize their bond with the papacy, the Pope gives each newly appointed cardinal a gold ring, which is traditionally kissed by Catholics when greeting a cardinal, as with a bishop's episcopal ring. Before the new uniformity imposed by John Paul II, each cardinal was given a ring, the central piece of which was a gem, usually a sapphire, with the Pope's stemma engraved on the inside. There is now no gemstone and the Pope chooses the image on the outside under Pope Benedict XVI that was a modern depiction of the crucifixion of Jesus, with Mary and John to each side. The ring includes the Pope's coat of arms once inside. Cardinals have in canon law privilege of forum, i.e., exemption from being judged by ecclesiastical tribunals of ordinary rank, only the Pope is competent to judge them in matters subject to ecclesiastical jurisdiction, cases that refer to matters that are spiritual or linked with the spiritual or with regard to infringement of ecclesiastical laws and whatever contains an element of sin, where culpability must be determined and the appropriate ecclesiastical penalty imposed. 
The Pope either decides the case himself or delegates the decision to a tribunal, usually one of the tribunals or congregations of the Roman Curia. Without such delegation, no ecclesiastical court, even the Roman Rota, is competent to judge a canon law case against a cardinal. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.